Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is going to be a very very quick walk around because this car has to catch the, the ferry going back home. You could see this build back in February when we had the majority of the install done. The whole speaker installation and the structural parts of the trunk and yeah, we simply ran out of time to make it pretty at the back. And now it came back at the end of the year. This turned out to be the last project for 2023. We started with it as well, didn't we? Yeah, and now we finish the year with this. And as you can see, we have a lot happening in here. Certainly much prettier than the way it looked. So quickly, I'll just show you around what's in this build if you haven't seen the previous videos. However, you will be able to find the link to the playlist of this project, then you will see what went into it. And then probably at the beginning of the video, you saw the little time lapse, seeing the whole installation. So <clears throat> the requirement in this build was, other than make it, you know, pretty show worthy, because it competes as well, is to make it serviceable and accessible because the car competes. And in Amma, we have a rule that you have to get to the fuses in, what is it, 60 or 60 seconds or two minutes, something like that. And we have fuses in the car at two different places. We have fuses here on the side at the second battery where we have a lithium and we have a power distribution and power um, supply behind the Amprec, which is easy to access, so I'm gonna show it. So here at the back, you can see three amplifiers. There are two class A amplifiers. There's one stag uh, class A, master stroke class A for one side mid and tweeter at the front. There's another one for the other side. And in the middle, you have the MSK 1500 running the mid base. And there's a huge monster, a monster subwoofer here, as you can see, the GL13W7, which many people thought that it's in IB, and it's not. It's in a huge sealed enclosure, uh, going as deep as possible on only one side of the boot, because on the other side we have modules, boxes, and all sorts of things, because this car has a hybrid battery pack underneath the Amprec. That's why we needed steel Amprec that can fold, so it can fully be serviced if it's needed. The JL sub, it's a dual voice call, dual one and a half ohm sub. That's why it's a bit difficult to pair it with most amplifiers. And we ended up having the two Helix M1Xs. Yes, many people can now pull their shoulders and say bad things about it because hey, this is an ultra high end installation and then you're using cheap monoblocks for the sub. Well, anybody can sit in this car without knowing what's in it and they wouldn't be able to tell what's running the sub. Because until you have stable power supply, you have plenty of headroom without distortion. That's, that's what I need for sub amplification. And these amplifiers don't do anything wrong. They don't have turn on or off pop. They don't have any noise and they have plenty of headroom. So currently we are running each on each voice call, giving us roughly around yeah, I think it's 700 and something watts on 2 ohms, so 1.5. Probably you have around 850-900 watts for each voice call. Plenty of headroom. And then here we have the audio solution S150. Power distro and stabilizer. This is a very cool piece of kit. As far as I know, there's nothing on the market like this. Where you have 8 outputs, 4 gauge outputs, and you have many other small remote outputs. So you have remote, you have cooling as well. On the cooling outputs, what we don't use now actually, uh, you can control fans because this unit comes with thermostat sensors as well. So you can put the sensors to the areas where you expect higher heat. And then that launches and poses the fans the way you wanna program it. And as you can see, it's very easy to get to the fuses. Um, you have two bolts, for the plexi and then it's that easy and you can put small blade fuses in it uh, each output has two uh, blade fuses so you can find big enough big ones uh, to make it work but yeah it's really simple layout you have ground positive auxiliary you have remotes cooling and of course you have a display right at the back as you could see we also have two more amplifiers and the dsp underneath the rack where most stuff is hiding underneath these stag amps. That's where we have a stag monoblock running the front sub, um, the Acuton 10 inch front sub. 
and we have a small stag fortune amplifier running rear field because we have speakers in the rear doors <clears throat> and we have speakers here in the ceiling as well that currently we are not using because that was a DSP change because unfortunately the previous DSP gave up and the owner decided to swap it out and try something new. So that's how we ended up now with an ESX DSP. Many people don't even know about the brand or haven't even heard about it. But um, these guys from ESX started to develop really, really good quality uh, DSPs. And actually, this is a HD player controller. Um, there are a few niggly issues with this DSP I'm not the biggest fan of. And especially like now, we have rear speakers that we used to run in differential. Now we can't run that in differential because it cannot process it or most of the things you want to control like sub-level or um, little adjustments you can only control from an app so you need a phone as well in addition to your controller because this controller is more just like a HD player so the main playback is from a file which got a custom mounting frame so it hides the cables uh, of course there's a, a phone holder here as well for the owner for uh, driving that's where the Ecuton 10 inch is hiding yeah that was a big job it's down firing and yeah that was quite something to build but you could see from the little montage video at the beginning of the video how we built it there's a lot of steel in it a lot of fiberglass fiber feel our wood technique a lot then we have the Ecuton 165s in the factory locations and many people say that the Mercedes location is not the best because you have carpet in front of it. Well, guess what? You can cut the carpet away. Yes, on the other side, it's a bit trickier, but you can cut the insulation from the back. You can shave the carpet as well and let it breathe. And that's mounted on the strongest part of the car. And that makes it really rigid, tight, accurate. And on top of that, this driver is super accurate. So it's a beautiful combination especially with a 10 inch front sub. You wouldn't be able to integrate the six and a half to the GL13 W7, that's for sure. But having the Ecuton 10 up front makes a beautiful combination, seamless integration. And yeah, you just tick all the boxes. You have upfront tightness, accuracy on upper base, and then you have the low end coming from the back, integrating to the front beautifully. Then we have the Ecuton uh, C100 AMs and the C30 in the sail panels this is more of an oem plus looking design we didn't want to make it too shouty especially with white cones which faded a bit by time and they don't look the prettiest anymore either um, plus we had to stick to the competition rules and that's the main reason of this rudder of axis aiming which on driver's side is, is more like a good 60 70 degree off but it plays high enough where it needs to play to before beaming uh, kicks in and then the tweeters in the sail panels which are quite on axis they take over like this is my driving position and the other tweeter is within like 10 degree and at least this way it's less for your eyes more for your, your ears and we still have tiny bit of things to, to change on the system we have a few little technical issues as well big projects like this never come together so quick especially this this is a very complex system um, but yeah this this car is is doing something that not many other cars can do that's for sure <clears throat> having that Ecuton 10 up front installed and tuned properly is, is game changer as well and of course yeah everything is pretty pretty much as good and installed as well as, as possible so this is where we are. There's going to be a little walk around video playing a bit of music for you guys for demonstration just to give a bit of inspiration. Hopefully you will be able to hear this car in the upcoming seasons because it's going to compete in Denmark and hopefully in Europe as well. Um, and we will see. We will see what we can do with this car, but certainly it's one of a kind. And now it looks, it looks pretty as well. That was equally important, especially after many of you know that the previous car was the Insignia, which had an insane trunk build. This is a bit more modest. It wasn't less time consuming. It was very time consuming to build all the panels, especially to make everything removable. Plus that the rack is on an angle when it has to tip. 
has to be serviceable. It was rather tricky to make everything happen, but now, yeah, it's certainly something, something special. If you want to see the whole process of making the panels, how we were designing, how we were bringing things together, how panels clip together, how we created um, the tolerances to make those gaps even all the way, then check out the link in the description. Then you can get to our Patreon page where we have many dozens of daily updates of this project when it was built in January and February and now when the panels were made as well then you can see all the little tricks and tips that we don't we don't have time for um, in any other way so if you want to learn more definitely check out the channel there's a lot more to learn over there especially as you get access to three years worth of content and that that place is, is now just insane you can learn so much I'm going to finish it here, guys. As I mentioned, check out the description, the playlist to this car as well. And hopefully you will be able to hear it and see it in the future. Till then, yeah, enjoy, enjoy your projects. And I can't wait to see, you know, what we get out of this. But certainly this is one of the best systems we've built. So proud, proud moments. All right, I'm going to cut it here, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.